How you guys and girls doing out there? You know, there's a lot of people uh, removing bees these days, shaking swarms. A lot of people have their own YouTube channels that fool with bees. A lot of my friends like uh, Yappy Bee Man, Dirt Rooster, Shawi, uh, Mr. Ed, the list can go on and on. There seems to be, a, you know, a, a lot of uh, interest in what we do. In this video, I just want to point out, get, maybe give you some tips on how, how to go about catching a swarm. And you don't need fancy equipment to catch a swarm, folks. You know, before you <clears throat> decide you want to maybe shake a swarm or deal with a swarm, uh, you want to have an idea if you're, you know, allergic. If you're not sure, uh, take an antihistamine. Those seem to re re reduce a reaction sometimes. Um, you know, by any means, if you're even remotely allergic or you think you might be, you know, then you don't want to do this. But for the average person, okay, that uh, wants to fool with bees and you want to give it a try, let's let's talk about that. So, um, first of all, uh, you know, swarms for the most part are pretty gentle, depending on where you're located. I've even known people to shake Africanized uh, swarms, and later on, once the bees develop. You know they got unruly and uh you know that led them to take notice of course and maybe to get them tested if you're not in an area that uh, has lots of africanized bees uh and you want to shake a swarm at the very least you might want to use a veil you know something like this is cheap you can get this off of amazon it'll protect your face you know a lot of times when you're fooling with bees they if they get a little unruly they will go to your face because of the carbon dioxide you're breathing off so that's why at the very least you know a lot of times you'll see beekeepers using the veil to protect their face uh other than that uh you know the next best choice would be like a jacket and veil and then um you know of course a, a full suit now to deal with swarms unless you're in an area that has really aggressive bees you shouldn't need a full suit okay so anyway uh equipment uh you know you don't need to go out and spend a, a lot of money to you know to catch a swarm uh you know it depends on on you know what your goals are you know if you want to start beekeeping then you're going to need to purchase some equipment and there's different companies that you know sell beekeeping supplies like better bee uh date ant you know there's companies out there you can you can get set up with with boxes with frames and all that but if you want to just if you just like the idea of maybe fooling with the swarm but you don't want to say keep them uh you could you could shake a swarm into a, a bucket, uh, any kind of container really uh, that has a lid on it. You, you want it to have a lid, and and you've seen a lot of my videos. I've used office boxes like this. So what I'll do is I'll shake the swarm in the box, and I'll put the lid on it, and uh, you set it aside. Unless they leave the box, they'll all be in, you know, come dark, and um, you know you can take them away. That's what I like to do anyway. I like to I like to leave them at the spot until dark, uh, unless I'm in a real rural area and it looks like we got most of the bees. Um, then I might just take them with me. But um, so this box right here has these handles. Okay, so it allows for plenty of ventilation. The ones I normally use don't have these handles built in like this. And uh, so then what I do is I'll make little holes all over the place because, you, you know, you want to make sure they're, they're ventilated because uh, they could you know, overheat in, in warm weather. I've caught and shook lots of swarms in these and, uh, you know, what they'll do is they'll start uh, building comb overnight, believe it or not, on the other side of the lid, lid here. And uh, so you want to get this to a beekeeper if you're not going to keep them yourself. Uh, you know, pretty pretty soon, maybe you know, two three days. Uh, you can go a little bit longer than that, but uh, the problem is swarms are you know, building machines, and if you wait too long, you know, they could fill the box up with comb, and then the person you give the bees to is doing a cutout. Okay, so it's more work for them. So, which brings me to something like this. Let me show you. This is a commercially available swarm trap, and I bought this years ago, and it's been in my shed. And uh, <laughs> the reason I really don't use them anymore is because uh, I've seen bees fill this thing up in five days' time where I had to cut it open and then you destroy the thing, you know. So cardboard boxes are a lot cheaper. But uh, these commercially available 
traps uh, you can use them now but you got to be prepared to, to check them frequently and you want to shake the bees out into proper equipment I'd say no longer than about four or five days you know really two or three days to be honest with you take a look at this one that I shook into one of these things years ago and they decided they wanted to build underneath and so I let them build underneath <laughs> So happens that I experience uh, gout for the first time and I get it in my fingers when I get it and I've only literally had it over the last 20 years let's say uh, maybe six seven eight times I had a golden opportunity to take a tweezers and go up to this thing and grab a couple of bees and I, I stung my joints and you know you, you definitely feel the sting of course but then you feel more bee venom has anti-inflammatory characteristics similar to cortisone and so once the, the venom uh, permeates you know, through the joints, you start getting relief. It's actually pretty magical. I, mean, I have relief for years. So uh, yeah, that, that hive really came in handy after that. But I don't really use them anymore. Um, so uh, if you want to spend a little bit of money, um, you know, this is a, a cardboard nuke. It's, it's, it's a temporary setup, okay? Uh, a little better than a cardboard box or something because, you know, you can add frames okay into this setup see you can add these frames if they start growing comb on the frames so what I mean you just transfer the frames to a you know to a, a setup like a 10 frame D box or, or one of these in a, a, a wooden new something like that but uh, if you wind up really getting into this uh, at some point you're gonna wind up losing some swarms I try to always catch the queen and uh, cage her you know and uh, you know if there's just one and occasionally you've got a swarm that has more than one queen and uh, I have had it happen where you know went back and you know the queen that I caught was in in the box with about maybe five bees and uh, the rest left so it does occasionally happen but it's not really the norm per se but uh, this is a queen catcher right here stainless from a uh, data and I like these so I'll a, a little trick is uh, I always keep a, a sheet with me. If they're over over a grassy area, and you go to shake them, uh, inevitably you're going to wind up with some bees in the grass thatch, and you're going to be digging them out. Put a sheet down, and you can shake them right on the sheet, and not only you keep them out of the grass thatch, but uh, they'll start spreading out. You know, you put your box in in front of the swarm, and if you have equipment that uh, has some scent, and we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, they'll probably run to your box, okay? And uh, while they spread, up, spread out and they're running, you're looking for the queen or queens. <laughs> these are more expensive, but they're more durable than something like this. This is a queen cage. Now, like these are these are Jay Z B Z queen cages. I really like these. The bottom just kind of pulls out like this. What's nice about that feature is that the bees can get in and out of this thing to tend to her, and they can do the same thing in here. You know, a lot of people. Uh, comment my videos where you you know you cage the queen you you you, you know you, you put her in jail but you know either whether it be a queen cage or a queen catcher the bees can get in and out to tend to the queen the only reason I cage them is to sequester them so that if the bees decide to leave the setup they have to come back and usually after two three attempts they're pretty much uh, going to commit to your setup so that's why you you cage them. If you're losing swarms, go ahead and uh, try to see if you can start catching these queens and caging them. And then, you know, after about two, three days on average, I'll go ahead and release them. All right. Getting back to uh, scents, um, I'll uh, put a link to a, a video uh, that I made uh, discusses that in a little bit more detail. But um, lemongrass oil, uh, beeswax, uh, propolis, uh, which we also call bee glue. It's uh, something that bees make from. Uh, tree sap and certain resins of flowers and uh, you can get that from you know beekeepers but if you're in an area if, if you've run across swarms before if you want to try your hand at it uh, if you just want to you know keep a box with you just just in case uh, you know you, you see a swarm you get a call you know maybe you'll never see a swarm in your entire life but if you're in an area and you've seen them you've seen swarms or you 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 know of a bee tree uh, that swarms every year and you want to go and try your hand at catching a swarm you don't need expensive equipment but if you're going to keep bees you'll eventually need to of course purchase uh, equipment to keep them in uh, I always say that I like doing cutouts 
but I love catching swarms because they are a lot of fun. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Another one from JP and the B Man. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Because you know I am. There'll be more coming. To the next one. Y'all have a great day.